The Diamond Cutter Sutra, Dorje Chopa. In Indian Sanskrit language, Arya Vajra Chedika Nama Parajana Paramita Mahayana Sutra. In English, the noble Mahayana Sutra on the wisdom gone beyond called the Diamond Cutter. I bow to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. This is what I have heard. At one time, the Buddha was staying in Shravasti in the garden of Ananta Pindada at Jetavana Grove together with a great community of 1,250 monks and a many great bodhisattvas. One day in the morning, having put on his robes, carrying the begging bowl, the Bhagavan Buddha entered the great city of Sravasti to beg for food. Then having gone to the great city, enjoyed the alms food and having performed the activity of food. He put away the begging bowl and upper robe as he did not having any later meal for the day. He washed his feet, sat upon the prepared cushion in a cross-legged posture, straightened his body upright and meditated. Then many monks approached the Buddha, bowing their heads to his feet, circumambulated three times and sat to one side around him. Also at that time, the Venerable Subhuti, joining that very assembly, sat down. Then the Venerable Subhuti rose from the seat, placed the upper rope over one shoulder, set his right knee on the ground, bowed, joining the palms, toward the Buddha and said this. Bhagavan, the extent to which the Tathagata perfectly enlightened Buddha has benefited the great Bodhisattvas with highest benefit, the extent to which the Tathagata has entrusted the great Bodhisattvas with highest faith, Bhagavan, it is amazing, Sujata, it is amazing, Bhagavan, how does one who has entered into the path of Bodhisattva manage? How do they practice? How do they behold their mind? When this had been asked, the Bhagavan said to the Venerable Subhuti, Subhuti, excellent, excellent. Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so. The Tathagata has benefited the great Bodhisattvas with the highest benefit. The Tathagata has entrusted the Bodhisattvas with the highest faith. Subhuti, therefore, listen properly and hold it in your mind. I will explain to you how one who has correctly entered into the path of Bodhisattva manages, how they practice, how they behold their mind. Having replied, Bhagavan, so be it, the Venerable Subhuti listened in accordance with the Bhagavan, and the Bhagavan said this, Subhuti, here one who has correctly entered into the path of Bodhisattva should generate the awakening mind, think like this, as many as sentient beings that are born from egg, born from the womb, born from heat and moisture, born miraculously, with form, without form, with perception, without perception, without no perception, the realm of sentient beings as many as are projected as sentient beings, all those I shall cause to pass completely beyond suffering into the realm of nirvana without the aggregates. Although limitless sentient beings have thus been caused to pass completely beyond suffering, no sentient being whatsoever has been caused to pass completely beyond suffering. Why is that so? Subhuti, because if a bodhisattva engages in conceptualizing a sentient being, one is not to be called a bodhisattva. Why is that? Subhuti, if anyone engages in conceptualizing a sentient being, or engages in conceptualizing a soul, or engages in conceptualizing a person, they are not to be called a bodhisattva. Further, Subhuti, when a bodhisattva practices generosity, they do not rely on objects. They practice generosity without keeping their minds on any phenomenon whatsoever. They practice generosity without focusing on form. Likewise, they practice generosity without focusing on sound, smell, taste, touch or a phenomenon. Subhuti, thus Bodhisattva practice generosity without conceptualizing any characteristics. Why is that? Subhuti, because the collection of merit of the Bodhisattva who practice generosity without focusing their minds, 
Subuti is not easy to take the measurement. Subuti, what do you think about this? Do you think it is easy to take the measurement of space in the East? Subuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. The Bhagavan said, Subuti, similarly, do you think it is easy to take the measurement of space in the south, west, north, above, below, the corners, and the space of ten directions? Subuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. The Bhagavan said, Subuti, similarly, the collection of merit of the Bodhisattva who practice generosity without relying on objects is also not easy to measure. Subuti, what do you think about this? Should one recognize the Tathagata through the perfect marks? Subuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. One shouldn't rely on perfect marks to recognize the Tathagata. Why is that? Because when the Tathagata speaks of perfect marks, there are no perfect mark being talked about. He replied this and the Bhagavan said this to the Venerable Subhuti. Subhuti, to the degree there are perfect marks, to that degree there is deception. To the degree there are no perfect marks, to that degree there is no deception. Thus recognize the Tathagata with characteristic and without characteristic. He said that and the Venerable Subhuti replied to the Buddha, Bhagavan, in the future, at the end of 500 years, when the Dharma will totally diminish, will any being properly perceive these words of sutras? The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, do not say that. In the future, at the end of 500 years, when the Dharma totally diminish, will any beings properly perceive these words of sutra produce correct conceptualization upon the words of sutras? Moreover, Subhuti, in the future, at the end of 500 years, when the Dharma will totally diminish, there will be great bodhisattvas endowed with morality, endowed with education, endowed with wisdom. Subhuti, those great bodhisattvas, moreover, will not make offering to just a single Buddha. They will not produce roots of virtue to just a single Buddha. Subhuti, there will be great bodhisattvas who will make offerings to many hundred thousands of Buddhas and produce roots of virtue to many hundred thousands of Buddhas. Subhuti, those who will obtain a single mind of faith upon the words of such sutras as these being explained, Subhuti, they are known by the Tathagata, Subhuti, they are seen by the Tathagata, Subhuti, all those beings will accumulate an limitless collection of merit. Why is that? Subhuti, because these great bodhisattvas will not engage in conceptualizing a self engage in conceptualizing a sentient being, engage in conceptualizing a soul, or engages in conceptualizing a person. Subhuti, these great bodhisattvas will not engage in conceptualizing dharma nor conceptualizing non-dharma, nor will they engage in conceptualization or non-conceptualization. Why is that? Subhuti, because if these great bodhisattvas caught up in the idea of a dharma, they are also caught up in the ideas of a self, ideas of a sentient being, ideas of a soul, and ideas of a person. Even if they caught up in the idea of a non-existent dharma, they are also caught up in the ideas of a self, ideas of a sentient being, ideas of a soul, and ideas of a person. Why is that? Further Subhuti, because a bodhisattva does not wrongly hold dharma nor hold non-dharma. Therefore, with that intention, the Tathagata said, those who understand this system of dharma like a boat, if they discard dharma, what need is there to mention of non-dharma? Further, the Bhagavan said to the Venerable Subhuti, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Is there a dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata perfect and complete enlightenment? Did the Tathagata taught that dharma? He said that, and the Venerable Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, as far as I have understood that was taught by the Bhagavan, there is no dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata perfect and complete enlightenment. That dharma that was taught by the Tathagata does not exist whatsoever. Why is that? Because any dharma that was completely realized or taught by the Tathagata cannot be conceived, 
cannot be expressed. It is neither Dharma nor non-Dharma. Why is that? Because noble beings are distinguished by the uncreated phenomena. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? If any son or daughter of the noble family, completely feeling this 3000 dimensional fold of spacious universe with the seven types of precious jewels as a practice of generosity, would that son or daughter of the noble family create a huge collection of merit on that basis? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, it is huge. Sugata, it is huge that any son or daughter of the noble family would create a huge collection of merit on that basis. Why is that? Bhagavan, because that very collection of merit is not a collection. Therefore, the Tathagata says, collection of merit, collection of merit. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, if someone accepts a stanza of four lines from this discourse of Dharma, explain it correctly and thoroughly teach it to others, the collection of merit on that basis would be much greater compared to any son or daughter of the noble family who completely feeling this 3000 dimensional fold of spacious universe with the seven types of precious jewels as a practice of generosity. Why is that? Subhuti, because the perfectly completed enlightenment of the Tathagata Buddhas arises from it. The Bhagavan Buddhas also are born from it. Why is that? Subhuti, because the so-called Buddha Dharma are those Buddha Dharma taught by the Tathagata as non-existent, therefore they are called Buddha Dharma. Subhuti, what do you think? Does a stream enterer think, I have attained the result of stream enterer? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. Why is that? Bhagavan, because one does not enter into anything whatsoever. Therefore, one is called stream enterer. One has not entered into form, nor into sound, nor into smell, nor into taste, nor into touch, nor into a phenomenon. Therefore, one is called stream enterer. Bhagavan, if that stream enterer think, I have attained the result of stream enterer. That itself would be a conception of a self, a sentient being, a soul, a person. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think? Does the once returner think I have attained the result of once returner? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. Why is that? Because the phenomenon of entry into the state of the once returner does not exist whatsoever. Therefore, one is called once returner. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think? Does the non returner think I have attained the result of non returner? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. Why is that? Because the phenomenon of entry into the state of the non returner does not exist whatsoever. Therefore, one is called non-returner. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Arhat think I have attained the result of Arhatship? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. Why is that? Because the phenomenon called Arhat does not exist whatsoever. Bhagavan, if the Arhat were to think I have attained the result of Arhatship, that itself would be a conception of a self a sentient being, a soul, a person. Bhagavan, I was acknowledged by the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha as the foremost of those who abide without delusion. Bhagavan, I am free of attachment, an arhat. Bhagavan, still I do not think I am an arhat. Bhagavan, if I were to think I have attained arhatship, the Tathagata would not have said to me that the son of the noble family Subhuti is the foremost of those who abide without delusion. Because he does not abide in anything, he abides without delusion. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Thus that Dharma that was received by the Tathagata from the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha Dipankara exist. Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. That Dharma that was received by the Tathagata from the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha Dipankara does not exist whatsoever. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, if a Bodhisattva say, I shall create arranged Buddha fields, they are lying. Why is that? Subhuti, because in so-called arranged Buddha fields, those arrangements are taught by the Tathagata as non-existent. 
Therefore, they are called arranged fields. Subuti, therefore, the great Bodhisattva thus should awaken the mind without focus, should awaken the mind not focusing on anything. They should awaken the mind not focusing on form, should awaken the mind not focusing on sound, smell, taste, touch or phenomenon. Subuti, it is like this. If, for example, the body of a person were to become thus, were to become like this, as big as Sumeru, the king of mountains, Subuti, what do you think about this? Would that body be big? Subuti replied, Bhagavan, that body would be big. Sugata, that body would be big? Why is that? Because it is taught by the Tathagata as not being a thing, therefore it is called a body. Since it is taught by the Tathagata as not being a thing, therefore it is called a big body. The Bhagavan said, Subuti, what do you think about this? If there were also just as many Ganges rivers as there are grains of sand in the Ganges, would there grains of sand be many? Subuti replied, Bhagavan, if those very Ganges rivers were many, there is no need to mention their grains of sand. The Bhagavan said, Subuti, you should imagine like that, you should understand like that, if some man or woman completely filling with the seven kinds of precious jewels that many universes, as there are grains of sand of those river Ganges, were to offer that to the Tathagatak perfectly completed Buddha's Subuti, what do you think about this? Would that man or woman create much merit on that basis? Subuti replied, Bhagavan, very much, Sugata, very much. That man or woman would create so much merit on that basis. The Bhagavan said, Subuti, if someone completely filling that many universes with the seven types of precious jewels were to offer to the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddhas compared to someone who accepts a stanza of four lines from this discourse of Dharma, explain it correctly and thoroughly teach it to others, on that basis the merit that creates would be much greater and limitless. Furthermore, Subhuti, if at any place on earth even a stanza of four lines from this discourse on Dharma is recited or taught, that place on earth is a sacred shrine of the gods, humans and demigods. What need to mention that whoever takes up this discourse of Dharma, writes, memorizes, touches, reads, understands and properly perceives it in mind will be most amazing. At that place there is certainly a master that resides. Gurus also reside. The Venerable Subhuti asked the Bhagavan, Bhagavan, what is the name of this discourse of Dharma? How should it be practiced? The Bhagavan said to the Venerable Subhuti, Subhuti, the name of this Dharma discourse is the gone beyond wisdom. It should be practiced like that. Why is that? Subhuti, because the very same gone beyond wisdom that is taught by the Tathagata is not gone beyond. Therefore, it is called gone beyond wisdom. Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does the Dharma that is taught by the Tathagata exist whatsoever? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, the Dharma that is taught by the Tathagata does not exist whatsoever. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Are the quantities of particles of earth that exist in a 3000 dimensional fold of spacious universe many? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, the particles of earth are very many. Sugata, they are very many. Why is that? Bhagavan, because the Tathagata says that these particles of earth are not particles, therefore it is called particle of earth. And Tathagata mentioned that the levels of universe are not a level, therefore it is called a level of universe. The Tathagata said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Is Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha recognized through those 32 marks of a great being? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. Why is that? Bhagavan, because those 32 marks of a great being mentioned by the Tathagata are mentioned not as marks, therefore they are called 32 marks of the Tathagata. The Bhagavan said, Further Subhuti, compared with some men or woman completely giving their bodies, numbering the grains of sand 
of the river Ganges, if someone taking even a stanza of four lines from this discourse of Dharma also teaches it to others, they would create much greater merits on that basis. Thereupon, the Venerable Subhuti was moved to tears due to the impact of the Dharma. Having wiped away the tears, he said to the Bhagavan, Bhagavan, this discourse on Dharma taught thus by the Tathagata Bhagavan is so amazing. Tathagata, it is so amazing. Bhagavan, since my attainment of exalted wisdom, I have never heard before this discourse on Dharma. Bhagavan, those sentient beings who will generate correct discrimination upon this sutra being explained will be most amazing. Why is that? Bhagavan, because that which is correct discrimination is not discrimination. Therefore, Tathagata taught it as a correct discrimination. Bhagavan, upon this Dharma discourse being explained, that I imagine and acknowledge is not so amazing for me. Bhagavan, in the end of time, in the final age, at the end of 500 years, those sentient beings who take up this Dharma discourse, write it, memorize it, touch it, read it, understand it, and properly perceive it in mind will be most amazing. Furthermore, Bhagavan, they will not engage in the conception of a self, conception of a sentient being, a soul, a person. Why is that? Bhagavan, because that itself which is idea of a self, idea of a sentient being, idea of a life, and idea of a person is separated of any conception. Why is that? Because the Buddhas are free of all conceptualization. He said that and the Bhagavan replied to the Venerable Subhuti. Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so. Upon this sutra being explained, those sentient beings who are not afraid, not terrified, and will not become terrified, will be most amazing. Why is that? Subhuti, because this highest gun beyond wisdom taught by the Tathagata was also taught by the limitless Bhagavan Buddhas. Therefore, it is called highest wisdom gone beyond. Further, Subhuti, that itself which is the gone beyond patience of the Tathagata has not gone beyond. Why is that? Subhuti, because when the king of Kalinga cut off my body and limbs, at that time I was not caught up in the ideas of a self, a sentient being, a soul, a person, and in me there was no conception whatsoever, also no non-conception. Why is that? Subhuti, because at that time, if I was caught up in the idea of a self, then I would also have a conception of hatred. If I was caught up in the idea of a sentient being, a living being, a person, then I would also have a notion arising of hatred. Subhuti, I know with my clairvoyance that in the past, for 500 lifetimes, I was the sage called preacher of patience. Even then, I was not caught up in the idea of a self, a sentient being, a soul, a person. Subhuti, therefore, the great Bodhisattva, completely abandoning all conceptions, should awaken the mind for unsurpassed, perfectly complete enlightenment. One should awaken the mind without focusing on form. One should awaken the mind without focusing on sound, smell, taste, touch or phenomena. One should awaken the mind without focusing on non-phenomena either. One should awaken the mind without focusing on anything whatsoever. Why is that? Because that itself which focus does not focus. Therefore, the Tathagata say, the Bodhisattva should practice generosity without relying on object. Further, Subhuti, the Bodhisattva should thus practice generosity for the welfare of all sentient beings. However, the conception of a sentient being is without conception, and what Tathagata call all sentient beings also do not exist. Why is that? Subhuti, because the Tathagata teaches what is real, teaches truth, teaches what it is. The Tathagata teaches what is without deception. Further, Subhuti, the Dharma that is completely realized or shown by the Tathagata is neither true nor false. Subhuti, it is like this. For example, if someone with eyes walking in the dark, one will not see anything. 
a bodhisattva who relies on objects and ideas to practice generosity is likewise. Subuti, it is like this. For example, upon down and the sun rising, a person with eyes sees various kinds of forms. The bodhisattva who practices generosity without relying on idea, focusing into anything likewise. Further Subhuti, those sons or daughters of the noble family who take up this Dharma discourse, writes it, memorizes it, touches it, reads it, understands it, and properly perceives it in mind, and thoroughly teaches it to others are known by the Tathagata, they are seen by the Tathagata. All those sentient beings will create limitless collection of merit. Further Subhuti, compared to some men or women, at the time of dawn, totally giving up their bodies numbering the grains of sand of the river Ganges, also totally giving up their bodies numbering the grains of sand of the river Ganges at the time of midday and evening, in such number, totally giving up their bodies for many hundreds, thousands of ten million, hundred billion eons. If someone having heard this Dharma discourse without abandoning it, if they themselves would create much greater and limitless merit on that basis, what need is to mention someone who takes it up, writes it, memorizes it, touches it, reads it, understands it, and thoroughly teaches it to others? Further Subhuti, this Dharma discourse is inconceivable and incomparable. This Dharma discourse was taught by the Tathagata for the benefit of sentient beings who have entered into the supreme vehicle, the welfare of sentient beings who have entered into the excellent vehicle. Those who take up this Dharma discourse, writes, memorize, touches, reads, understands and thoroughly teaches it to others are known by the Tathagata, they are seen by the Tathagata. All those sentient beings will be endowed with an incomprehensible collection of merit. Being endowed with an inconceivable collection of merit, incomparable, immeasurable and limitless, all those sentient beings will carry my enlightenment on the shoulder. Why is that? Subhuti, this Dharma discourse is unable to be heard by those who imagine to be inferior, by those who are caught up in the idea of a self, a sentient being, a soul, a person, are unable to hear, to take up, to memorize, to read and to understand it, because there is no basis. Furthermore, Subhuti, if at any place on earth even a stanza from this discourse on Dharma is recited or taught, that place on earth is a sacred shrine of the gods, humans and demigods. That place on earth will become worthy as an object of homage and worthy object of circumambulation. That place on earth will become like a sacred shrine. Subhuti, if whatever son or daughter of the noble family takes up the words of a sutra like this, writes it, memorizes it, touches it, reads it and understands it, they will be tormented. They will be intensely tormented. Why is that? Subhuti, because whatever non-virtuous actions of former lifetimes that were committed by those sentient beings that would bring rebirth in the lower realms due to torment in this very life, those non-virtuous actions of former lifetimes will be purified and they will also attain the enlightenment of a Buddha. Subhuti, I know with my clairvoyance that in the past, in even more countless of countless eons, much beyond, even beyond the Tathagata Fall Destroyer perfectly completed Buddha Dipankara, there were 8400 thousands, often million, 100 billion Buddhas whom I pleased, and having pleased, Subhuti, from whatever I did, having pleased and not having against those Buddhas and in the future, at the end of 500 years, from someone taking up this sutra, writing it, memorizing it, touching it, reading it and understanding it, Subhuti, compared to this collection of merit, the former heap of merit does not approach even a hundredth part, a thousandth part, a hundred thousand part does not withstand enumeration, measure, calculation, similarity, equivalence or comparison. 
Subuti, at that time the sons or daughters of the noble family will receive a quantity of collection of merit that if were to express the collection of merit of those sons or daughters of the noble family, sentient beings would go crazy, would be disturbed. Further Subuti, this Dharma discourse being inconceivable, its results indeed should also be known as inconceivable. Then the Venerable Subhuti replied to the Bhagavan, Bhagavan, how should one who has correctly entered the Bodhisattva's vehicle abide? How practice? How behold the mind? The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, here one who has correctly entered the Bodhisattva's vehicle should generate the mind thinking this. I shall cause all sentient beings to pass completely beyond sorrow into the realm of Nirvana without reminder of the aggregates. All those sentient beings were caused to pass completely beyond suffering like that. No sentient being whatsoever was caused to pass beyond suffering. Why is that? Subhuti. Because if a bodhisattva engages in a notion of a sentient being, one is not to be called a bodhisattva. Also, if he engages in notion of a person, one is not to be called a bodhisattva. Why is that? Subhuti. Because the Dharma called one who has correctly entered the Bodhisattva's vehicle does not exist whatsoever. Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does that Dharma that was manifestly and completely realized by the Tathagata from the Tathagata Dipankara, unsurpassed perfect and complete enlightenment exist whatsoever? The Venerable Subhuti replied to the Bhagavan, Bhagavan, that Dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata from the Tathagata Dipankara, perfect and complete enlightenment, does not exist whatsoever. The Bhagavan replied to the Venerable Subhuti, Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so, that Dharma that was manifestly and completely realized by the Tathagata from the Tathagata Dipankara, unsurpassed perfect and complete enlightenment, does not exist whatsoever. Subhuti, if that Dharma that was manifestly and completely realized by the Tathagata were to exist at all, the Tathagata Dipankara would not have made the prediction to me, saying, Young Brahmin, in the future you will become the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha called Shakyamuni. Subhuti, thus, since that Dharma that was manifestly and completely realized by the Tathagata, unsurpassed perfect and complete enlightenment, does not exist whatsoever. Therefore, the Tathagata Dipankara made the prediction to me, saying, Young Brahmin, in the future you will become the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha called Shakyamuni. Why is that? Because Subhuti, Tathagata is an epithet of the suchness of reality. Subhuti, if someone were to say, the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha manifestly and completely realized, unsurpassed perfect and complete enlightenment, they would speak wrongly. Why is that? Subhuti, because that Dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata perfect and complete enlightenment does not exist whatsoever. Subhuti, that Dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata has neither true nor false. Therefore, all dharmas are Buddha dharmas, was taught by the Tathagata. Subhuti, all dharmas, all those are non-dharmas. Therefore, it is said that all dharmas are Buddha dharmas. Subhuti, it is like this. For example, like a human endowed with a body and the body became large. The Venerable Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, that taught by the Tathagata a human endowed with a body and a large body is taught by the Tathagata as not being a body. Therefore, it is called endowed with a body and a large body. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so. If some Bodhisattva were to say, I shall cause sentient beings to completely pass beyond suffering, one should not be called Bodhisattva. Why is that? Subhuti, does the Dharma that is called Bodhisattva exist whatsoever? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it does not. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, therefore, it was taught by the Tathagata that all Dharmas are without a sentient being, without a living being, without a person. Subhuti, if a Bodhisattva say, I shall create arranged Buddha fields, they are lying. Why is that? 
Subhuti because in so-called arranged Buddha fields, those arrangements are taught by the Tathagata as non-existent. Therefore, they are called arranged fields. Subhuti, whatever Bodhisattva believes that dharmas are selfless, saying dharmas are selfless, one is expressed by the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha as a Bodhisattva called a Bodhisattva. Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does the Tathagata possesses the flesh eye? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, thus it is, thus it is so, the Tathagata possesses the flesh eye. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does the Tathagata possesses the divine eye? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, it is so, the Tathagata possesses the divine eye. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does the Tathagata possesses the wisdom eye? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, it is so, the Tathagata possesses the wisdom eye. The Tathagata said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does the Tathagata possesses the Dharma eye? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, thus it is, thus it is so, the Tathagata possesses the Dharma eye. The Tathagata said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does the Tathagata possesses the Buddha eye? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, thus it is, thus it is so, the Tathagata possesses the Buddha eye. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? If there being also just as many Ganges rivers as there are grains of sand in the river Ganges, there were just as many world systems as there are grains of sand of those, would those world systems be many? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, thus it is, thus it is so, those world systems would be so many. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, as many sentient beings as exist in those universes, I totally know their continuum of consciousness of different thoughts. Why is that? Subhuti, because a so-called continuum of consciousness is that taught by the Tathagata as a non-continuum. Therefore, it is called a continuum of consciousness. Why is that? Subhuti, because past consciousness does not exist as an observable, nor does future consciousness exist as an observable, nor does present consciousness exist as an observable. Subhuti, what do you think about this? If someone completely feeling this 3000 dimensional fold of spacious universe with the seven type of precious jewels were to practice generosity, do you think that son or daughter of the noble family would create an enormous heap of merit on that basis? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan enormous, Sugata enormous, the Bhagavan said. Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so. That son or daughter of the noble family would create an enormous heap of merit on that basis. Subhuti, if a heap of merit were a heap of merit, the Tathagata would not have taught a heap of merit called a heap of merit. Subhuti, what do you think about this? Should one be viewed as the Tathagata due to total achievement of the form body? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. One should not be viewed as the Tathagata due to total achievement of the form body. Why is that? Bhagavan, because total achievement of the form body is that taught by the Tathagata as not being total achievement. Therefore, it is called total achievement of the form body. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Is one to be viewed as the Tathagata due to the perfect marks? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, it is not so. One is not to be recognized as the Tathagata due to perfect marks. Why is that? Because that which was taught by the Tathagata as perfect marks was taught by the Tathagata as not being perfect marks. Therefore, they are called perfect marks. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, what do you think about this? If it is taught that the Tathagata considers the Dharma is demonstrated by me, Subhuti, do not see it like that, because the Dharma that is demonstrated by the Tathagata does not exist whatsoever. Subhuti, if someone were to say, the Dharma is demonstrated by the Tathagata, Subhuti, he would deprecate me, since non-existent and wrongly seized. Why is that? 
Subhuti because that demonstrated dharma called demonstrated dharma, which is referred to saying demonstrated dharma, does not exist whatsoever. Then the Venerable Subhuti said to the Bhagavan, Bhagavan, in the future will there be any sentient beings who having heard this demonstration of such a dharma as this, will it be trusted? The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, they are not sentient beings nor non-sentient beings. Why is that? Subhuti so-called sentient beings because they were taught by the Tathagata as non-sentient beings, therefore are called sentient beings. Subhuti, what do you think about this? Does that dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata perfect and complete enlightenment exist whatsoever? The Venerable Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, that dharma that was completely realized by the Tathagata perfect and complete enlightenment does not exist whatsoever. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so, for it even the least dharma does not exist and is not observed, therefore it is called perfect and complete enlightenment. Further Subhuti, that dharma is equal since for it inequality does not exist whatsoever. Therefore, it is called perfect and complete enlightenment. That perfect and complete enlightenment equal as selfless, without sentient being, without soul, without person, is completely realized through all virtuous dharmas. Subhuti, virtuous dharmas called virtuous dharmas, they taught by the Tathagata as just non-dharmas are therefore called virtuous dharmas. Further Subhuti, compared to any son or daughter of the noble family collecting a heap of the seven types of precious things about equal to Sumeru, king of mountains, exist in 3000 dimensional fold of spacious universe and practicing generosity, if someone having taken up even as little as a stanza of four lines from this gone beyond wisdom were to teach it to others, Subhuti, compared to this collection of merit, the former collection of merit, having not approached even a hundredth part, does not withstand comparison. Subhuti, what do you think about this? If it is taught that the Tathagata considers, sentient beings are liberated by me, Subhuti, do not see it like that. Why is that? Subhuti, because those sentient beings who are liberated by the Tathagata do not exist whatsoever. Subhuti, if some sentient being were to be liberated by the Tathagata, that itself would be of the Tathagata grasping a self, grasping a sentient being, grasping a soul, grasping a person. Subhuti, so-called grasping a self, that is taught by the Tathagata as non-grasping, yet that is grasped by ordinary beings. Subhuti, so-called ordinary beings, they were taught by the Tathagata as just non-beings, therefore they are called ordinary beings. Subhuti, what do you think about this? Is one to be seen as the Tathagata due to perfect marks? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it is not so. One is not seen as the Tathagata due to the perfect marks. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, thus it is, thus it is so. One is not seen as the Tathagata due to perfect marks. Subhuti, if one were seen as the Tathagata due to perfect marks, even a Chakravartin king would be the Tathagata. Therefore, one is not seen as the Tathagata due to perfect marks. Then the Venerable Subhuti said to the Bhagavan, Bhagavan, as I understand the meaning of what the Bhagavan has said, one is not recognized as the Tathagata due to perfect marks. Then these verses were spoken by the Bhagavan at that time. Whoever sees me as form, whoever knows me as sound, has wrongly engaged by abandoning those beings do not see me. The Buddhas are Dharmata viewed. The guides are the Dharmakaya. Since Dharmata is not to be known, it is unable to be known. Subhuti, what do you think about this? If one conceives that the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha is due to perfect marks, Subhuti, you should not view so. For Subhuti, the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha does not manifestly and completely realize perfect and complete enlightenment due to perfect marks. 
So, Buddhi, if one grasps that some dharma has been designated as destroyed or annihilated by those who have correctly entered the Bodhisattva's vehicle, so, Buddhi, it should not be viewed so. Those who have correctly entered the Bodhisattva's vehicle have not designated any dharma whatsoever as destroyed or annihilated. Further, Subhuti, compared to any son or daughter of the noble family who completely filling with the seven kinds of precious things as many world systems as there are grains of sand of the river Ganges, were to practice giving, if any Bodhisattva attained forbearance that dharmas are selfless and unproduced, on that basis the heap of merit they themselves would produce would be much greater. Further, Subhuti, a heap of merit should not be acquired by the Bodhisattva. The Venerable Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, should not a heap of merit be acquired by the Bodhisattva? The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, acquire not wrongly grasp. Therefore, it is called acquire. Subhuti, if someone says, the Tathagata goes or comes or stands or sits or lies down, he does not understand the meaning explained by me. Why is that, Subhuti? Because the Tathagata, the one gone thus, does not go anywhere nor has come from anywhere. Therefore, one says, the Tathagata perfectly completed Buddha. Further, Subhuti, if some son or daughter of the noble family were to render as many atoms of earth as exist in a 3000 dimensional universe, like this for example, into powder, like a collection of subtlest atoms, Subhuti, what do you think about this? Would that collection of subtlest atoms be many? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, thus it is, thus it is so. That collection of subtlest atoms would be many. Why is that? Bhagavan, because if there were a collection, the Bhagavan would not have said collection of subtlest atoms. Why is that? Because that collection of subtlest atoms that was taught by the Bhagavan was taught by the Tathagata as no collection. Therefore, one says collection of subtlest atoms. That multidimensional world system that was taught by the Tathagata was taught by the Tathagata as no system. Therefore, one says multidimensional world system. Why is that? Bhagavan, because if there were to be a world system, that itself would be grasping of a solid thing. That taught by the Tathagata as grasping of a solid thing was taught by the Tathagata as no grasping. Therefore, one says, grasping a solid thing. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, grasping a solid thing is itself a convention. That Dharma does not exist as expressed, yet it is grasped by ordinary beings. Subhuti, if someone were to say, viewing as a self was taught by the Tathagata and viewing as a sentient being, viewing as a living being, viewing as a person was taught by the Tathagata. Subhuti, would that be spoken by right speech? Subhuti replied, Bhagavan, no, it would not. Sugata, it would not. Why is that? Bhagavan, because that which was taught by the Tathagata as viewing as a self, was taught by the Tathagata as no viewing. Therefore, one says, viewing as a self. The Bhagavan said, Subhuti, those who have correctly entered the Bodhisattva's vehicle should know, should view, should appreciate all dharmas like this. They should appreciate like this, not abiding whatsoever in any discrimination as a dharma. Why is that? Subhuti, because discrimination as a dharma called discrimination as a dharma is taught by the Tathagata as non-discrimination. Therefore, one says discrimination as a dharma. Further, Subhuti, compared to any great Bodhisattva who completely feeling unfathomable and limitless world systems with the seven kinds of precious things were to practice generosity, if any son or daughter of the noble family who having taken as little as a stanza of four lines from this perfection of wisdom were to memorize it or read it or understand it or correctly and thoroughly teach it to others in detail, on that basis, the merit he himself would produce would be much more unfathomable. How should one correctly and thoroughly teach? 
just how one would not correctly and thoroughly teach. Therefore, one says, correctly and thoroughly teach. It's a star, a visual aberration, a lamp, an illusion, dew, a bubble, a dream, lightning, and a cloud. View all the compounded like that. That having been said by the Bhagavan, the elder Subhuti, those bodhisattvas, the fourfold disciples, bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas and upasikas, and the world with devas, humans, asuras, and gandharvas, overjoyed, highly praised that taught by the Bhagavan. The exalted Mahayana Sutra on the wisdom gone beyond called the Diamond Cutter is concluded.